Good morning, learners and viewers. Welcome to the session of Management Information System, MMBO 004. We will start with Block 1, that is Overview of Management Information System. Unit 1 is related to the introduction to information systems. Information systems are critical to the operation of modern organizations. They are interconnected network of hardware, software, data, people, and procedure assigned to collect, process, store, and disseminate information to aid in decision making coordination and control. In a rapidly changing business environment, information systems have been critical to for organizations of all sizes and types to remain competitive, efficient and effective. They assist organizations in achieving their objectives by enhancing internal operations, facilitating communication and collaboration and assisting in strategic decision. Information system studies multidisciplinary, combining elements of computer science, management and information technology. In today's business, information systems are critical because they allow organizations to collect, store and process data to make informed decisions by providing real-time data and analysis. They can help businesses become more agile, responsive to market changes and communities. Information systems are critical for businesses to operate effectively and efficiently in today's fast-paced and data-driven the combination of hardware, software, data, people, and procedures that organizations use to collect, process, store, and disseminate information is referred to as information system. But this may be called a small definition of information system. These systems aid in decision making, coordination, and control, and they assist organizations in achieving their now, what is the act? exactly what is meant by information system? Information systems study of complementary networks of hardware and software that people and organizations use to collect, filter, process, create, and distribute data. Information systems are interrelated components working together to collect process, store, and disseminate information to support decision-making, coordination, control, analysis, and visualization in an organization. These definitions focus on two distinct aspects of the information system. The first one is the component that compromise an information system, and second one is the role in an organization. 
what are the different types of information? Internal information and external information are the two broad categories of information. Internal information it is defined as information generated by the organization's operations at various management levels in various functional areas. Internal information is summarized and processed as it progresses from the lowest to the highest level of the company. Internal information is always about the organization's various operational units, production figures, sales figures, personal, account, and material information are examples of internal information. Internal information is typically consumed by middle and junior management. Because we are aware of there are three levels, top, middle, and junior. If we see to the right side of the screen, you can see that there are two informations, lower one, which is related to internal information, which is a part of controlling information related to the internal environment of the organization. And if you move on the higher side, that is from middle to the top, that is external information, a part of external information. And here, planning information related to external environment is good. Now the thing is that what is external information? External information is typically gathered from the businesses, organizations, and the surroundings. External information is defined as information that comes from outside the organization and has an impact on its performance. External information includes government policies, competitions, economic state, and international market. External information is typically required by top management leaders and is useful in developing long term policy plans for the organization. What are the dimensions of information system? The dimensions of information systems can be viewed as a framework for analyzing and designing information systems. They are organizational dimensions includes information system, the standard operating procedure and culture of an organization will be embedded in an information system. Functional specialties, business processes, culture and political interest groups are all part of this. This refers to the people, policies and procedures that govern how and organization's information system is used and managed. A sales management system, for example, is a part of the organization dimensions because it helps to improve sales performance. Second one is management dimensions. Managers perceive environmental business dynamics. Information system provide managers with their rules and information they need to allocate, coordinate, and monitor their work. This make decisions, create new products and services, and make long-term strategic decisions. The policies, procedures, and rules that govern the use of the information system are a part of this. The management dimensions include things like password, Backup procedures and data scooping policy. Then comes your technology dimension. Management makes use of technology to carry out their duties. Computers, hardware, software, data management technology, and networking, telecom technology are all part of this. It is one of the many tools used by managers to deal with the change. This includes the hardware, software, data, and network components that comprise an information system, technical infrastructure, a server, a personal computer, and a database software are examples of technical dimensions. Then comes 
strategic dimensions. This entails aligning the education system with an organization's overall goals and strategies. This includes decision making processes as well as the impact of the information system on the competitiveness and success of the organization. Then comes user dimensions. This refers to the information systems and users and how they interact with it. And the e-commerce website, for example, is a part of user dimension because it allows customers to purchase goods and services. Now, what are the operating elements of information system? The components that allow an information to function effectively and efficiently is known as its operating elements. They are hardware, a system's physical components such as computer equipment, peripheral devices, and other supporting equipment are a part of hardware. And if we talk about software, a set of instructions that instruct the hardware on what to do. System software such as operating system and application systems are both included in it. Then comes the third part that is data. Information that the system stores and processes. It can include both structure like a database and an unstructured data such as a text document. Then, next part is the procedures, the steps and processes that are followed to complete specific tasks such as data entry, information processing, and report management. Next part is the people, those who use the system as well as to support and maintain it. Then comes network, the communication channel that connects the various companies and allow them to work together. Policies and security measures, the guidelines and measures that ensure the system's information confidentiality, integrity, and availability. The major processing function in operation systems are first one is business transaction processing, it captures, collects, record, store, and process events of the business interest so that their impact is reflected in organizational performance record. Second one is master file updates. The effect of the transactions is carried over to the organization's performance status files. At any given time, master file must reflect the status of the entity after incorporating the Impact of current conditions. Next one is information report generation. After processing transactions and updating master files, information reports are generated to assist managers in making decisions. Processing of interactive inputs. Online information processing system allows managers to respond to business queries based on data files, both master and knowledge files. Providing interactive analytical support. Key decision makers require not only interaction with data files for data extraction using scientific and planning models, but also online processing support to analyze the impact of some potential actions. A decision support system, what we call it as DSS, is created when the system can extract data from relevant files and addresses it to the models selected by the user. What are the different types of information system? Information system can be classified into several types based on their functions, organization levels, and the nature of data processing. There are basically many types of information system. Some are depicted over here. Transaction processing system, that is TPS. Management information system, MIS. 
Decision Support System (DSS), Executive Information System (EIS), Expert System (DS), Artificial Intelligence System (AI), Enterprise Resource Planning System (ERP), Supply Chain Management System (SC), Customer Relation Management System (CRM), and Knowledge Management System (KMS). We will discuss. Not in detail, but what all these processing systems are. We'll start with the next processing system. It is an information system that processes data resulting from business transactions. Their goals are to be provided transactions so that the record can be updated and the reports can be generated. That is to perform store keeping functions. Other containerized where it is used. It is used in bell system, payroll system, stock control system. Second one is management information system, what we call it as MIS. A management information system is intended to take relatively raw data available through a transaction processing system, TPS, and summarize and aggregate it for the managers. Usually, it is in the form of Middle management and operation supervisors are likely to use its example sales management system, human resource management systems. Then comes decision support system, DSS. A decision support system is an interactive information system that provides information models and data manipulation tools to assess decision making in semi-structured and unstructured situations. The end user is more involved in creating DSS than an MIS because DSS includes tools and techniques to assist in gathering relevant information and analyzing options and alternatives. Its examples are financial planning system, bank loan management system. Then comes your expert system. Expert system include expertise to assist managers in diagnosing and solving problems. These systems are based on artificial intelligence research principles. Expert system is a data driven information system. It acts as an expert consultant to users by applying its knowledge at a specific scale. Office automation system. An office automation system is a type of information system that automates various administrative processes such as documenting, data recording, and office transactions. The administrative and clerical activities are separated in the office automation system. Email, voicemail, and word processing are some of the examples of the business activities performed by this type of information system. Executive support system is ESS. It assists top level executives in planning and controlling workflow, as well as making business decisions. It is similar to MIS. It provides great telecommunication better computing capabilities and effective display options to executives among other things. It provides information to them in the form of static reports, graphs, and textual information on the web. It also helps to monitor performance, track competitor strategies, and forecast future trends, among other things. What are the components of information system? An information system is a collection of hardware, software, and telecommunication networks that people construct, collect, create, and distribute useful data, usually within an organization. It defines the information flow within the system. An information system board 
is to provide appropriate information to the user, gather data, process data, and communicate information to the systems unit. The components of information system are computer hardware and computer software. Now we see that. What are the different components of the information system? It comprises of five basic one, first one is computer software, computer hardware, networks, database, and human resources. Now, we will see what is meant by computer hardware and what is meant by computer software. Computer hardware is a physical equipment and is used for input, output, and processing. The hardware structure depends on the type and the size of the hardware. Consists of an input and output device, an operating system, a processor, and media device. This also includes computer peripheral devices. Now, what is computer software? The program application program is used to control and coordinate the hardware components. It is used for analyzing and processing the data. These programs include a set of instructions used for processing information. Major processing functions in information systems. Information system processing functions refers to the operations performed on data, such as data input, manipulation, storage, and retrieval, to produce meaningful information. It entails converting raw data into a format that can be used for decision making, reporting, and analysis. The goal is to support an organization's information needs by making data accessible, accurate, and useful. The primary function of information systems are input and capture of data data storage and retrieval on its requirement, data processing and analysis, decision making and problem solving, information output and dissemination, data maintenance and data security and protection. These functions collaborate to ensure that the data is collected, processed, stored and presented in a way that meets an organization's needs. How to apply information system in businesses? Enterprise resource planning, what we call it as DM. It is a type of software that integrates different functions of an organization in a single system. What is the purpose of DM? The purpose of DM is to streamline and automate business processes such as Finances, human resources, procurement, supply chain management, and customer relationship management. The goal of ERP is to provide a single source of truth for an organization's data and to improve decision making by giving executives and managers real time access to accurate Many ERP systems are replaced and can be accessed from anywhere within an internet connection. ERP implementation can be a complex and time consuming process, but it can bring many benefits to the organization, such as including increased efficiency, reduced errors, better visibility into business operations, and improve decision. Then comes supply chain management. Supply chain management is the coordination and management of activities involved in the production and delivery of products and services to the customers. It involves managing the flow of material, information, and financial capital from the suppliers through the organization and out to the 
customers. SCM includes a wide range of activities, including procurement, production planning, inventory management, transportation, warehousing, and customer services. The goal of SCM is to optimize the flow of goods and services improve the efficiency of the supply chain and enhances the overall customer experience. Effective SCM requires collaboration and communication between all participants in the supply chain, including suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, and customers. And this can be achieved through the use of technology such as electronic data interchange or we call it as EDI, RFID, that is radio frequency identification, and cloud-based collaboration. A well-designed and efficiently managed supply chain can help companies to improve their bottom line and achieve a competitive advantage in their markets. Next component is the customer relationship management, that is CRM. CRM is a strategy that organizations use to manage their interactions with customers and potential customers. The goal of CRM is to create and maintain strong, long lasting relationships with customers by understanding their needs and behaviors, and by delivering the products, services, and experience that they have. CRM is typically achieved through the use of software and technology. CRM can encompass a wide range of activities, such as sales management, marketing, customer service and support, and customer analytics. By centralizing customer data and automating many of the processes involved in managing customer interactions, organizations can improve the efficiency of their customer-facing operations and provide a better customer experience. With the increasing competition and the rise of digital channels, Companies must be able to effectively manage their interactions with customers to build strong, long-lasting relationships and stay ahead of their competition. What are the effects of the information system? The products of information technology are part of our daily lives. Here are some of the effects about necessary for a business to grow. In a business, there may be a need of computer, software, implementation of network architecture to achieve the company's objective or designing apps, websites, updates. Any company that is looking to secure its future needs to integrate a well-designed information system. Secondly, better data storage and system. Such a system is used for storing operational data, documents, communication records, and histories. As manual data may cost a lot of time, information systems can be very helpful in it. Information system stores data in a sophisticated manner making the process of finding the data much more easy. Then comes your data decision. Information system helps a business in its decision making process. With an information system, delivering all the essential information is easier to make better decisions. In addition, an information system allows employees to communicate effectively. Now, we move to unit 2, 
that is introduction to management information system we can see that there are three components in management information and system all of these three things are brought together now what is meant by management management has been defined as a process a function and a profession concerned with the activity of accomplishing tasks with and through people. managers perform variety of tasks such as planning directing controlling staffing leading and motivating second component is input it is defined as collection of facts figures and symbols that have been processed for the current decision making situation the information is thought to be important in a specific situation and the third component is the system a system is defined as collection of related components activities processes and human interaction to achieve a common management information systems are collection of related processes activities individuals or entities that interact to provide process data to individual managers at various levels in various functional areas management information system are primarily intended to provide information derived from data after it has been processed information system do not generate data after being generated by business operations in an organization the data is generated collected recorded stored processed and retrieved the information system adhere to the procedures established for processing the data generated within the organization information systems are created for the organizations rather than individuals the information systems are designed for various different levels of action they are intended to meet the information needs of top middle and junior management decision makers the information systems are intended to provide information to managers in various functional areas managers in marketing finance production personal materials logistics and other area receive the information databases should be used to integrate information systems integrating information systems eliminates data storage process and report generation to reduce the likelihood of data integrated discrepancies it ensures single point data entry and upkeep of master data files simultaneously computers and other electronic devices helps to facilitate information systems what is the importance of analytics why is there are different points to which you can understand why what is the importance of analytics improved decision mis provides access to real time data which allows organization to make informed decision based on accurate and up to date information it increases efficiency mis automates many manual processes freeing up of time and resources and reducing the risk of human error better collaboration mis enables employees to share information and collaborate on projects more effectively regardless of physical location competitive advantage mis helps organizations stay ahead of their competition by providing them with the tools and information they need to make strategic decisions improved customer service mis can help organizations understand customer needs and preferences leading to 
improved customer satisfaction and increased customer loyalty. Another part is cost saving. MIS can help organizations reduce costs by automating manual processes, reducing errors, and improving operational efficiencies. Another thing is that if MIS has advantages, on the other hand, it will have some major disadvantages also. High cost. Implementing and maintaining an MIS system can be expensive. The total cost involved includes hardware, software, staffing, and training expenses. Complexity. MIS system can be complex and difficult to use, especially for people with limited technical That means work on MIS has to be computer input. Dependence on technology. MIS system relies on technology and can be vulnerable to system failures, software bugs, and security breaches. Inaccurate data. The accuracy of the data in an MIU system depends on the quality of the data that has been entered into. So that is a data entry is a manual entry. If the data is inaccurate, the report generated by the system will also be inaccurate. Resistance to change. People with organizations fear resist using an MIU system due to fear of change lack of trust in technology or difficulty in learning how to Then, the most important part is the maintenance requirement. An MIS system requires ongoing maintenance and upgrades to keep them functioning effectively. And this can be a time consuming and a costly affair. The next component is organizational and steadily use of MIS. Management information system is related to organizations and strategy in the following ways. First one is assist in disease making. MIS provides disease makers with the pertinent information they require to make informed decisions. Aligns with organizational strategy. MIS is designed and implemented to support the overall strategy and goals of the organization. It increases operational efficiency. MIS automates many business processes, which reduces errors and increases efficiency. It promotes communication and collaboration. MIS promotes communication and collaboration among the department and networks, thereby improving organizational coordination and alignment. It improves competitiveness. MIS assists organizations in remaining competitive by providing timely, accurate information and allowing them to respond quickly in the changing market. Information system and technology, computer hardware, software, and data management are among the fundamentals of information system and technology. Information systems are a collection of interconnected components that work together to collect, process, store, and designate information to support decision making and control vigilant operations. The tools and techniques used to develop, operate, and maintain information systems are referred to as technology. Information systems are more complex and are best understood by examining them from both a technological and a business standpoint. Management information system. Information system and technology are required as ISMT. Perspective focuses on technical and functional aspect of information systems. 
this point of view is concerned with the design, development, implementation and maintenance of the technology infrastructure that supports the information needs of the organization. Hardware, software, data management and network systems are all part of this and are included. The ISNT viewpoint is concerned with how information systems can be used to support an organization's day-to-day -day operations, automate manual processes, and provide real-time access to the information. This viewpoint regards information system as collection of tools that can be used to improve efficiency, cut cost, and boost productivity. Implementing an entire uh, resource enterprise resource planning system, developing a customer relationship management system with the CR, and deploying a cloud-based data storage and management system are all examples of ISMT in the MIS context. Database management system. A database management system is software that allows an organization to centralize data, manage it efficiently, and provide application programs with access to the stored data. The data management system serves as a bridge between application programs and physical data files. When an application program requests a data item such as cross pay, the DBMS located on the database and return it to the application. Data management information system from the database management system perspective focuses on the management and organization of data within an organization. This regards the DBMS as the foundation for efficiently and effectively storing, organizing and retrieving data. The DBMS is in charge of ensuring the accuracy, reliability and consistency of the data stored in the system in the context of MMS. It also includes tools for defining data relationship, enforcing data constraints, and restricting data access. Organizations can, be, can use a DMS to sim simplify the process of storing, retrieving, and analyzing data, resulting in a more effective decision. The use of relational databases such as Microsoft SQL Server and Oracle for storing and retrieving data as well as NO SQL databases such as ODB and Cassandra for storing and retrieving large amount of unstructured data are example of DBMS in the MIS context. Then comes enterprise resource planning system. What is in short, we call it as ERP system. ERP system refers to integrated software system that manage a company's core business processes such as finance, human resource, supply chain management, and customer relationship management. ERP systems are intended to provide a unified view of an organization's data, obviating the need for separate systems and databases. ERP system provides businesses with a centralized platform for managing operations, streamlining processes, and increasing efficiency. ERP system enables organizations to make data-driven decisions, reduce manual processes, and improve information accuracy by integrating information from various departments and functions. SAP, Oracle, and Microsoft Dynamics are the examples of ERP systems. These systems are used in a variety of industries, including manufacturing, retail, healthcare, and 
funds. Electronic commerce, that is in short, we call it as e commerce. This includes the principle of conducting business over the internet, including e commerce strategies, online payment system, and digital marketing. E commerce, in the context of management information system, refers to the buying and selling of goods and services over the internet. E commerce enables organizations to reach a wider customer base, increases sales, and reduces the cost associated with traditional brick and mortar. From the MIS perspective, e commerce requires the integration of a range of information systems, including payment system, customer relationship management system, and inventory management system. This integration allows organizations to provide a seamless customer experience from product discovery to purchase and to manage the flow of information and goods between the different parts of the organization. Examples of e-commerce in the MIS context include online marketplaces such as Amazon and eBay and online retail stores such as Walmart and Target. E-commerce includes business to business transactions such as purchase of raw materials or supplies by manufacturers. Business intelligence and decision making. Business intelligence in the context of management information system, it refers to the use of data, analytical tools and technology to support informed decision making in an organization. The goal of business intelligence is to turn data into actionable information that can inform and support strategical, tactical, and operational decision making. This can include activities such as data collection, warehousing, data analysis, reporting, and video management. Decision making in MIS involves information system and insight generated from business intelligence to make informed decisions about various aspects of an organization such as finance, operations, marketing, and others. The purpose of decision making in MIS is to support an organization's ability to achieve its goal and objectives by leveraging data and information to inform decisions. Both BI and decision making in MIS is critical for in the success of an organization by providing the information and insights needed to make informed decisions, monitor performance, and derive continuous improvement. System Development Life Cycle, SDLC. This includes the various stages of developing a software system, including requirements such as gathering, design, implementation, and testing. The system development life cycle and management information systems refers to the creating and maintaining information system. It consists of the following phases, such as requirements, gathering, and analysis. This phase involves understanding the needs and requirements the stakeholders. First one. Second one is design. In this phase, the system is designed based on the requirements gathered in the first phase. Then comes your development and testing. The system is developed and tested to ensure it meets the design specification for the design implementation. Then comes implementation. The system is to be put into use in this phase. Then comes maintenance. 
the system is monitored, maintained, and updated as needed to keep it running smoothly. Then comes the last part, the retirement. The system is decommissioned when it is no longer needed. STLC helps ensure that the system is developed in a systematic and controlled manner, which reduces the risk of error and improves the quality of the fire. Ethics and legal issues in information system. Ethics and legal issues in information system in are connected with the responsible use and protection of information and technology. Ethics. This refers to moral principles and values that guide behavior in the use of information and technology. This includes issues such as privacy, accuracy, security, and intellectual property. If we talk about privacy, it is protecting the confidentiality and personal information of individuals. Accuracy, ensuring that the information stored and processed by information system is accurate, up-to-date, and free from errors. Security, protecting the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information and technological systems. Intellectual property, protecting the right of creator and owner of information, such as copyrights and papers. What are the legal issues in information system in terms of MIS, which includes Compliance with laws and regulations. Organizations must comply with laws and regulations related to information and technology, such as data protection law and privacy regulations. Then comes liability. Organizations can be held responsible for the misuse of information or technology systems. Electronic contracts, the legality and enforceability of electronic contracts and agreements. The goal of addressing ethics and legal issues in IS is, MIS is to ensure the responsible and legal use of information and technology and to protect the rights and the interests of individuals and organizations. Now comes unit three, that is system development rights. Here we will see how what are the different processes in this system development life cycle. System development life cycle is a project management conceptual model describing the stages of information system development project from initial feasibility studies to application maintenance. SDLC applies to both technical and non-technical services. In most cases, a system is an IT technology that includes both hardware and software. SDLC is typically attended by project and analysis. System and software and is development team and the end case. SDLC provides a rigid structure and framework for defining the phases and steps involved in system development. SDLC stands for synchronized data link control and software development apps. A software development life cycle is similar to the system development life cycle. It focuses on software development life cycle only. The effective system development life cycle should result in a high quality system that meets customer expectations, is completed on time and within budgets, and work effectively 
and efficient in the current and planned information technology infrastructure. SDLC is a conceptual model that includes policies and procedures for developing or changing systems throughout their life cycles. Analyst uses SDLC to create an information system. SDLC activity includes requirements, design, implementation, testing, development, operations, and the maintenance. What are the phases of SDLC? The system development life cycle is a comprehensive and systematic approach to developing and maintaining information systems. The figure shows the seven stages of SDLC. We will start with planning, analysis, design, development, integration and testing, implementation and maintenance. What is meant by planning? The organizational identity identifies the need for a new system and defines its objective and scope during the stage. A feasibility study is carried out to determine whether or not the project is feasible and the resources required. Second one is analysis. During this stage, the organization collects and analyzes the system requirements, gathering requirements from stakeholders and developing a detailed system. Specifications are the part of this stage. Third one is design. A system design is created during this stage, which includes the software, hardware, architecture, database design, user interfaces, and system security. Development. This stage entails the actual coding and development of the system based on the previous stage. Developers design, develop, debug and test the system. Integration and testing. The system is tested during this stage to ensure that it meets the requirement and functions as expected by the organization. To validate the system, various types of testing are performed, including unit testing, integration testing and acceptance testing. The next stage is the implementation. The system is installed and deployed in a live environment for end users to use at this stage and is deployed in a production environment and used by customers and employees. Maintenance, the last one, after the system has been deployed. This stage entails providing support for it. The system may require maintenance and bug fixes as well as the addition of new features based on customer feedback. As DLC is a thorough and well-defined approach to system development that ensures systems are delivered on time, within budget, and with high quality. How will you see? There are seven stages of code normally. How do they do the work? If we talk of stage one, that is planning. Here, what are the existing work? The question is what we, for what we are working. Stage two analysis, what do we want? Stage three is design, how it should look like. Stage four is development. Let us start it or let us create. Stage five is testing. Is it the exact one what we need? Stage 6 is integration. How will we use it? And stage 7 is maintenance. Let us make the improvement. The passage of time it has to be changed. There are six methodologies of system development life cycle. First one is waterfall. The waterfall model was the first to be introduced as a process model, which is for the you can see at the top, it is the requirement analysis, then comes the system design, implementation, 
testing, deployment, and the maintenance. The water fuel sequential phases are gathering and analyzing requirements. Here, all possible requirements of the system to be deployed are captured and documented in a required specification document. Second one is system design. Here, the requirement specifications for the first phase are set and the system design is Third one is implementation. The system is first deployed in a small programs or units, which are then integrated into the next phase. Then comes testing. After testing each unit, all the units deployed or developed during the implementation phases are integrated into a system. Sequential deployment after functional and non-functional testing is completed. The product is deployed in the customer environment or released to the market. Last part is the maintenance. To improve the product, never versions are released. Maintenance is performed to implement these changes in the customer environment. Second one is interactive model. The interactive model begins with a simple implementation of a small set of software requirements and iteratively improves the evolving versions until the entire system is implemented and ready for deployment. An interactive lifecycle model does not attempt to begin with a complete set of requirements. Instead, Development begins with specifying and implementing only a portion of the software, which is then reviewed to identify additional requirements. This process is then repeated, resulting in a new version of the software at the end of each model. With this, we will be ending the session.